Now, what happened to the two thieves that were on the cross? Because Jesus said to one of the thieves, Today you will be with me in paradise. Well, look back at the timeline on the back wall. I want to show you something. We put two crosses up here. Those two crosses represent the thieves. Now, we put them on either side of them, and the reason we did that is because that's how it's naturally depicted. The problem is, and this is what I want you to see, is before Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you were still in the Old Testament period. The New Testament period did not begin until the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Everyone with me? In other words, the New Covenant is not initiated until after the resurrection. So when do the thieves die? Do they die under the New Testament or the Old Testament? They died under the Old Testament. So when the two thieves died, where do they go? Well, one was a believer and one was not a believer. In fact, one's saying, but if you're the Christ, you do this. The other one rebukes him and says, don't say that. Can't you see? He doesn't deserve to die. We do deserve to die. Jesus looks at the one and he says, today you'll be with me in paradise. Where's paradise? Bosom of Abraham. So, you've got these two thieves. When they die, both bodies are buried, but... The one thief goes to the bosom of Abraham, a.k.a. paradise. Now, later on, where's paradise? After the Jesus' ascension and his resurrection. Paradise is now heaven. It's where you're comforted. But before that, you couldn't go to heaven because your sins hadn't been paid for. Everyone with me? The unbeliever so goes to the place of torment. Now, let me ask you another question. Is Jesus God? Not a trick question. Is Jesus God? Yes. yes, Jesus is God. If Jesus isn't God, your sins haven't been paid for because he wouldn't have the attribute of infinitude, which would mean that he can't die for everyone. He can only die for one person. But Jesus is God. Now, he emptied himself while he walked on this earth. That's what Philippians chapter 2 tells us. It's called the kenosis doctrine. But I want you to understand something. Jesus is and was God. So as God, Jesus is omnipresent. Now let me ask you another question. Is God in hell? What did the pastor do today? What did he teach on? He stumped us. He asked us, is God in hell? Is God in hell? Yes, God is in hell. Why do I say that? Because God is omnipresent. Omnipresent means that God is everywhere at all times. If God was not in hell, then God wouldn't be omnipresent. It would also mean that he's not omnipotent because his power is not in hell. Therefore, he's not all powerful. He's powerful everywhere except in hell because he's not there. But God is everywhere at all times. In fact, the scriptures teach that. Look with me, if you would, in Psalms chapter 139, verses 7 through 8. Where can I go from thy spirit, or where can I flee from thy presence? If I ascend to heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, thou art there. You see what David is saying? There's nowhere I can go that you're not there. I can't flee your presence. If I make my bed in Sheol, You're there. Your presence is there. Let me show you something else that will kind of screw with you. <laughs> Look in Revelation chapter 14, verses 9 through 10. What happens to the people who took the mark of the beast? Notice what it says. Then a third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He, who's he? The one who takes the mark and worships the beast in his image. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels, and in the presence of the Lord. 
they're going to be cast into hell, but they're still in the presence of the Lamb. Yeah. So, when he told the thief on the cross, he said, today with you will be with me in paradise. What he was saying is, you're going to go to paradise. I'll be with you because my presence is there. I'm omnipresent. But my soul is going to hell to pay for your sin so you can be in paradise. My soul is going to hell so you can be taken captive to heaven. I'm changing locations where paradise is. It's going to, be, it's going to move from the, from the bosom of Abraham to heaven. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Now, let me say this because this is used quite a bit. Someone who doesn't believe that Jesus went to hell in order to pay for our sin, they'll say this, well, Jesus said it is finished. In other words, everything he needed to do to pay for our sin is finished. That's not what that means at all. Jesus is our Passover lamb. Did you know that? Yeah. Jesus was crucified on Passover. But more specifically, he died just as the very final lamb was being slain. The lamb of the high priest. Let me explain something to you. Josephus tells us, in fact, it's up here if you want to read it afterwards. Josephus tells us that in 65 AD, over 256,500 lambs were slain. It was an automatic process. What you did on April the 10th is you picked out your lamb. Had to be spotless, had to be without blemish for your family. Everyone did that. But something else happened. The high priest went and he picked out his lamb that was going to be the lamb for the whole nation. In fact, when Jesus does his triumphal entry, he upstaged the high priest because what normally happened is on the, on, on the Nisan the 10th, when they would take his, his high, the high priest would take his lamb, he would come into the city and everyone would come out and they would have these palm branches and they're waving them. But something upstages the high priest. As he's coming into the city, Jesus rides in on a coat. And all the people start waving to him. And boy, it infuriates not only the high priest, but all the Pharisees. And they said, do you hear what they're saying? Shut them up. Jesus, of course, is the final Passover. So he's the Passover lamb. He says, if I shut them up, said even the rocks would cry out. But anyways, so he comes in. And for four days, he goes to the temple because every day when after, on the 10th after you picked out your lamb, you had to inspect them every day to make sure there was no blemish. On the 14th of Nisan, you're going to kill it. Now, as I said, Josephus said over 256,000 lambs were brought to Jerusalem to celebrate the Feast of Passover, and they had to be brought to the temple. And people look at that and go, how in the world did they do that? Well, people, let me just tell you, it was like an assembly line. All these priests were there, and you brought your lamb in, and they slit its throat. They caught the blood. They passed it on. You took the lamb out. The next lamb's brought. They cut the throat. They take the blood. They pass it on. They get an empty one. They're doing this, and they've got these, these, got these lines, and the one at the very end is taking that blood, and he's throwing it upon the altar. Starts at 9 o'clock, but by 3 o'clock, you've got to be finished. Because the high priest has other duties. He's got to go mark the sheaves that's going to be used in preparation for the Feast of First Fruits. That always happens on the first day of the week. So at 3 o'clock, it's over. And at 3 o'clock, the high priest is now going to sacrifice his Passover lamb. So he walks up to the altar. It's, not, it's in a different place. And everyone sees that that's still there. And he lays his hands on there. He's laying on confessing the sins of the nation. They take this Passover lamb and whoo, they cut it and they catch the blood. And as they catch the blood, they pass it, or the high priest takes it and throws it on the altar. And then he takes a step back. And he puts out his arms and he says, It is finished! And what he means by that is, that's the last Passover lamb to be slain. Yeah. No other lamb can be slain now. 
This is the last one. At the very time, the Bible says at 3 o'clock, the very time that the high priest is doing that, Jesus, in John 19, tells us, verse 30, is on the cross. And he raises up one last time and he says, It is finished! And he dies. Signifying that I am the final Passover lamb. 